Hi guys, Tom here with another video for those of you who want to learn about making alternative electronic music. We're talking organic, down-tempo, electronica, edgy hip-hop, lo-fi, deep house, all of that good stuff. So if any of that appeals to you, make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you can catch the videos as I post them. Today, we're going to be breaking down a track in the style of Taku. We're going to look at his earlier sounds, so we're talking about heavy bass lines and driven drum samples. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the drums. We have the kick drum number one. That's just a simple bass drum. It's a nice subby kind of hard hitting. We've got a EQ where we're just boosting those low frequencies, getting towards the sub range. We're just giving them a little bit of a boost. We've got a limiter on there to just top off those dynamics that are just kind of bleeding over the zero decibel range. I've layered on a second kick. So we've got kick number two here, if you can hear it now. So I just wanted a bit more click and sort of from the Taku's um, music back in the sort of, I think, 2011 late NYC era, he has these sort of kick drums that have like a lot of sub, but then they've got like a little clicky bit to them as well. So I have dragged in a second drum sample and I have just applied a high pass filter and then I've just boosted those kind of top end bits to get that click to come out. If I disabled that, we can hear how it sounds. So it's already quite clicky, but I didn't want any of those extra sub frequencies to be uh, competing with the first kick. So if I layer that in now, on top of that, I have got a open hi-hat sample that will play on a few of the kick samples. So it sounds like this. When layered in with the kicks, it sounds like this. If you notice, you can see that there is a fade on the second instance of this open hi-hat. So I wanted the first one to be a bit more of like a an open, like psh, psh, sudden stop. And then I want the second one to be like, psh. so it kind of had a little bit of a different feel, a bit of a different groove. So just listen for that now. On these drums, I've got this closed hi-hat. I just dragged a closed hi-hat sample into the track. I have put a bit of a band pass, taking out lots of those low ends and just sort of rolling off the ultimate high ends. So without it, and with it, not a big difference, but it kind of helps with cleaning up the frequencies for the rest of the mix. Let's listen to just the kicks and the hi-hats there together. To achieve a bit of a groove, I have, on terms of the positioning of these closed hi-hats, it's kind of the intent that it's on the offbeat, but it's on the offbeat and I've pushed it a bit further back to give it that swingy groove. I'll play all of the drums together. And so if I hadn't have just sort of pushed these closed hi-hats off the beat a little bit, it would sound a bit more mechanical and it would sound like this. It's kind of like a different feel to, and again, I mean, both sound good, but I've chosen to push them a little bit off to give that more late groovy kind of feel. Moving on, we've got the snares. So I'll play the snare groups together. We can hear how that sounds. Really hard cracking snare sounds there. So I've layered that up with three layers, two snares and a crash. So let's listen to the first snare. For that one, I have clearly done a lot of frequency manipulation. So I've got this bandpass filter where before it would sound like this. So I'm just like, I wanted some of those like twacky kind of frequencies in that mid range to thicken up the other snare, which is like this and just sort of layering them together gives the kind of a little bit more depth to that snare sound. 
And then layered on top of that, I have a crash. It's quite quiet in the mix, but it gives a bit of width and a bit of high end sparkle to these snare cracks. For each of these three sort of snare layers, I have bust it to bus five, and I'm treating bus five as a snare drum group. So each of these three all go to bus five, and then I'm applying some group parallel processing to all of them. So I'll run over that parallel processing now. This here is on bus five. I've got a high pass filter, so I'm just rolling off some any of those erroneous low ends. I've got a Valhalla reverb on there with quite a short decay. And what I'm doing with that, I'm then pushing that reverberated sound through a compressor to really bring out that aggressive room sound. A limiter on top of that, and then a transient shaper to actually take off some of the attack and to bring out some of that sustain. So if I take off all of these bits of processing, this is how that group sounds. Quite dead, quite dry, quite lacking in energy. But as I start to bring in, so here I have enabled the high pass filter and the Valhalla reverb. So we've got that room sound to it now. I'll now enable the compressor where I'm pushing that room reverb and that sound through a compressor with quite a high kind of gain and it does quite a bit of squashing of the sound. Really squashing that sound and bringing out that room. And then the transient master. With the transient master, this is where we want to prolong the tail of the snare and sort of take out a bit of the click at the start. So without it and with it, so that is kind of bringing out the, the tail of that snare and sort of softening the start. So for all of these drums that aren't the kicks, I have then subsequently put all the outputs of those to a drum bus. So these hi-hats, I have bus to bus six, and then the output of this snare bus, I have also put to bus six. And so bus six is like my percussion hi-hat snare bus where I'm grouping all of the other sounds that is not the kick and into a bus to do a bit more processing on them. On that channel I've got another high pass just to make sure that nothing's bleeding through on that low end and I've got a compressor doing a bit more squashing of the sounds. It's bringing the level up and it's just making it a bit more squashed and aggressive. So that's how I'm getting that sort of early taku aggressive swinging groovy hard hitting drum line that you can hear here. Next we have some chords. Let's solo them and have a listen. The instrument is the quick sampler in Logic and I have got it just loaded on with the preset which is a sample of a sine wave and it's just playing, it's acting as like a bit of an organ, a bit of like a, a, a kind of a keys sound. If I take off the additional processing, this is how it sounds kind of right out of the box. So on top of that, I've got this uh, bandpass filter where I'm taking out the highs and the lows and I've got this mid range and I'm boosting those up again to make it a thicker kind of like moodier sound. I've also got a tape delay on there. So this tape delay, I'm, I'm using it not for its delay properties, but for its tape emulation properties. So I have got the dry signal down to 0% and the wet signal up to 100% with the delay time down to zero and the feedback down to zero. So it's basically applying all of the effects of the delay, but without actually delaying the signal. To sort of take advantage of that, what I've done is I've got this modulation section on the tape delay and I have got the LFO rate for this pitch bend sound that sort of slowly comes in and out and it gives it a bit more character it gives it a bit more mood and i've also pushed up the spread so instead of it being monoed it kind of brings the sound out a little bit so i'll disable it and then i'll enable it and we can listen to the the impact it has on the sound enable You might be able to hear the slight pitch wobble in there. On top of that, I've got an LFO tool 
that is doing some side chainings. It's just doing it on a one quarter note basis. I've added that in so it creates a sort of a creative effect and that's one of these things in these edgier hip hop -y kind of genres you get a lot of the side chaining that give a bit of pump and a bit of movement to the sound and it also helps to let the kick ring through and you don't have to have it as high in the mix so you kind of get a better master at the end of the day. Next chord we have is this wide chords so let's have a listen to those. That's achieved through a retro synth. I've got this pretty simple patch. It seems like I have got a sawtooth wave and a square wave with the pulse width pushed up a little bit. Both of those oscillators are sort of a 50%. I wanted this kind of wide, crispy sound that adds a bit more atmosphere into the track. So if I take off all the processing, this is how it sounds. And with the processing, really thins out the sound. So I've added a sample delay in there to push it as far out to the left and the right as I could because I wanted it out of the way for the mix. I've got a high pass filter on there, so that's where I'm taking out those low ends. I've added a reverb on top of that. And then we've also got another LFO tool on there that is doing that pumping on the one quarter note basis. So the idea was that they're playing the same notes as the chords from before and I wanted to just layer that on top. One thing to note for the chords of the first instrument is I have, when I'm playing these notes in, they're sort of delayed in like a strum pattern so it's not just like playing one group of notes together, they kind of play up and strum as they go so if you listen. Yeah, it's a bit more of a jazzy chord. It kind of gives that human element to it. Let's listen to that with the drums. You can really hear that side chain coming in and giving it that pumping effect with the kick drum. Next instrument, we've got this arpeggiated sound. It has been achieved through uh, serum. So this isn't a sort of stock logic plugin, but it's using the pretty simple features of serum. So we've got these two oscillators, oscillator A and B. Uh, they've both just got a sawtooth wave on there. Um, I've got this filter that's kind of just rolling off the top end and boosting a little bit of the drive and the resonance. And I've got this envelope. So it's really kind of a, kind of like a plucking sound. It sounds quite good when you do that sort of doo -doo 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 sound to it. I've got a reverb, so it's adding that space to it. I've got an EQ where I'm taking out some of the low ends and I'm boosting those mid ranges. And again, we've got an LFO tool on there that is doing the pumping for the sidechain. So if I show you the notes that I played for that, you can kind of just see that it's just going. And I actually took quite a bit of time programming in how those came so it's not like necessarily on the beat at all i wanted to achieve a certain groove and a sound so i was sort of was trying to dial it in so that it sounded pretty good so if you can compare both of these they're actually playing different note well they're playing the first four notes and this one's just playing the last three notes i've muted these ones because i didn't like the sound of them and i've kind of just dragged them to a place where it feels right along with the kind of the groove of the drums so i'll play that along with the full drums and the chords from before. Next we have this bass synth sound. This is like a really aggressive gritty bass synth sound that's quite loud and quite compressed in your face and it sort of fits that early Taku style. Here's the notes for that. That's been achieved through the retro synth again. So I've got a triangle wave and a sawtooth wave. I have a bit of a filter that's going on there, but the, the amplifier and the filter, it doesn't do too much movement. It's just quite a solid note. So when you play it, it's just like... Kind of sound, so it's just like a solid note. 
and then it stops quite suddenly. It's like beep, 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 beep. Without any of the processing, this is how it sounds. Quite weedy, quite thin, quite weak. So that's why I've thrown a compressor on there. Squashing that sound a little bit. I've also added an overdrive onto it and that's what's given it a bit more of the low end grit. So if I play it now, I found adding this overdrive on there, pushed it forwards, put it more in your face, made it aggressive and I quite like that sound. I've got an LFO tool on there that is just doing some pumping for the side chain and I've got an EQ that's rolling off the absolute subs and it's boosting the sort of the bass frequencies. So let's have a listen with all of those. And finally, we have this bells or like xylophone sound. So that's playing the same notes as the bass with a little bit of the, a shift. That's the bass at the lower ones and the higher ones are those. So they're playing pretty much the same notes, but the higher ones have a bit more of like a, some leading notes that are going into it for like these ones here with like, if we just play those together. So that kind of complements the bass sound. So let's just see what we've got for these bells. So there is a clean xylophone sample in the sampler. Sound like that. I've added some compression, some overdrive, some EQ to roll off the lows and really boost those high ends. I've added a reverb on there. And then again, we've got some side chaining with that LFO tool. So I'll take off the processing. Let's have a listen to that. And now with the compressor and overdrive, with the EQ and the reverb, and now the side chain. Gives a little bit of sparkle to the top end of the track. Yeah, so for the second half of the track, just for like a bar, I took out the drums, uh, let the chords kind of keys sound ring through for a bit for a little bit of a break, and then it drops back in. So that's what you hear in there. All right, so that is kind of it. It's quite a quick one today, quite a simple setup, not too much in the sound design. It's just choosing your sounds it's then finding a place for them in the mix and then doing some like aggressive processing to bring the sort of the drums and the sounds and the bass sounds like right up in your face and putting it in the right place in the mix thank you for watching to the end if you enjoyed that video if you got anything out of it leave a like on this video and make sure to subscribe to this channel and you can catch more videos just like this as i post them other than that, I'll catch you in the next one.